Hey guys, Jill here. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. As you can see, I am in my garden and based off of the trellises behind me, things are dying, right? My beans that are not frost hardy have completely died. They just need to be cleaned off my trellis. I have some cut and come again greens that I never covered up with frost protection that need to come out of the garden. And that had me thinking, I get asked this question a lot and I thought, well, while I'm cleaning up some garden beds, I'll just tell you guys kind of the process that I do for overwintering beds. Um, now this can be applicable now on several seasons. So you could be doing this, say you don't grow a fall and winter garden. You could do this when you ripped out your summer garden or say you have fall things um, like my beans and my greens. Once they have died, this is kind of what I do just to overwinter my bed before I get ready to plant it in the spring. Now it's really important uh, in my opinion to not mess with uh, the ecosystem that's going on in your soil. You don't want to disturb those roots. You really just want to be putting stuff in the soil that's just going to feed the soil while you're not doing anything with it. Um, you'll hear a lot like, oh, don't disturb the soil, don't disturb the soil, and it is 100% accurate. A lot of things is going on down there, and the less that you mess with that, the better. Uh, so I'm just gonna take you guys into the garden, show you what I do, and I hope that it's helpful. All right, so I'm gonna turn you guys around, show you the bed that we are going to be cleaning out today. This was my bed that had cut and come again lettuces in them. As you can see, things are starting to bolt. They are just no longer these crisp greens. The frost has taken them out. Uh, this lettuce down here, some of it may be good, but as you can see, these are my red mustards. Just this bed kind of looks like a mess right now. Now I have gotten so many harvests off this bed that I am totally fine. Although I know it looks like a lot of food here, it is truly, but I have literally cut this bed completely back two different times we fed the rabbits from here a lot so I feel okay I mean it just kept on coming I mean this bed just kept producing and kept producing so I feel totally okay just to clean it out and just start overwintering it so the first thing I'm gonna do is just take my scissors or pruning shears or whatever and we're just gonna cut down at the very base and that's why I was telling you you don't really want to rip a plant up when you start ripping your plant up you start messing uh, with the little ecosystem that's going on the soil and this is true for your summer garden as well even if you have let's say a tomato plant that established that really really huge root system and you know you're not planting anything in your beds for fall or winter I would cut it down at the base and just let that root system decompose over the fall and winter and you should be good to plant it again in the spring which is what I recommend uh, just cutting down at the base You do want to make sure, so you see this one right here, that's up quite a bit. So I'm just gonna go through and cut right at the soil line. That way if I move this back, I can see the stem right there, but it's not like, you know, this huge part was still sticking out of the soil. So just use your best joy judgment, cut as, you know, to the soil line, as close to the soil line as you can. that I have cleaned out some of that there are obvious weeds uh, very invasive weeds for me here so I'm actually going to gently be pulling those up uh, because if I leave that in there they're just going to continue to spread and then this bed is going to be overtaken with this really just nasty weed that it doesn't need so be mindful of that if you do have an invasive weed in your bed uh, you can lay down black plastic if the entire thing is full of weeds and kill it or you can do cardboard um, or you can just simply go through and as I am seeing, you know, like this little weed, I'm just gently pulling it out of the soil. Now the good thing with all of this is that I can now go take this, all these plants, there's nothing wrong with them, there's no disease on these, and we're just gonna go add all of this to the compost pile, which is also going to be a huge key part in overwintering your beds. 
you can see our compost pile here i've got sunflowers from the past season i've got soil for microgreens we've got leaves these are actually pea shoots that are coming up this is a good start of a compost pile here so once you've cleaned out your bed and you've got it completely done it's going to take me a while to finish cleaning out all of that this is when you'll go in and you'll start adding in your compost now if you make compost like what i just showed you uh, you can add that if you buy compost whatever that looks like and you're just going to top dress it so just put a couple inches layer on there the good thing about uh, the fall is there's an abundance of leaves most of the time depending on where you live so i'll put a thin layer of compost down but then i'll just go gather a bunch of leaves and material that i have readily available to me in my yard and i'll just start packing that on now the cool thing about winter time is it freezes and then it thaws and so that's kind of helping push all that and break that down in the soil to where you're not really having to do anything um if you have a really large bed you could think about planting cover crops um, that do certain things hairy vetch is a really popular winter cover crop um, but right now i think the best bet those things you kind of need to think about earlier on uh, because they need to get established before the frost would come and stuff like that i would just say clean out your beds uh, do as little damage as possible to your soil then add a layer of compost whatever that looks like whatever you're comfortable whatever you usually use for compost maybe layer it with some leaves and stuff like that all right so i'm going to give you guys a look of where we are right now you guys can see i still have some stuff that could come out but overall i'm okay with this so when you clean out your bed you want it you're not going to get every single thing out and that's completely fine so let's go grab some compost let's add this uh add that on top but look at that soil you guys like this is good soil that is good rich soil that has just been taken care of it has had amendments put into it throughout the season uh, it was getting nutrients from the plants that i had put in here so let's go grab some compost top dress it sometimes you'll notice that your bed will shrink over a year uh, and that's just as far as your soil and things like that and that's really typical if you're ripping out plants you're taking a lot of soil with that and they just kind of decompose over time um, so just eyeball that typically depending on how much my bed has shrunk throughout the season uh, determines how much compost i add to it and i will more than likely add compost to it again at the beginning of the season before i plant now I've come into my herb room real quick to look for some other things. You could absolutely just buy like some sort of raised bed, like a good raised bed potty mix and put in there to amend it. Um, since I didn't add any amendments to that bed in particular because it had fresh soil, I think I'm going to grab some of my coffee grounds and put in there as well. This is really, really good for your soil. So I'm just gonna add a couple things in there and make my own little concoction. Um, so just do whatever you're comfortable with. I would say whatever you usually amend your bed with uh, in the spring, that's exactly what you're gonna do to overwinter it as well. Just do that same process. Another thing that I really wanted to mention that is a good time had to do this is during the winter if you're not planting anything, and that is testing the pH of your soil. Now you can buy kits, I'll link them below. You can buy them on Amazon. Uh, you can even like Google how to do an at-home pH uh, soil test. This is a really good time. Maybe if you were having issues with your soil in the summer garden and you were noticing that maybe your you know, soil was showing signs of having too much nitrogen or too little nitrogen or too much phosphorus or whatever, this is a great time in the off season to really kind of hone in those things and figure out what your soil is uh, needing because the coffee grounds that's going to add nitrogen to my soil but if i have high nitrogen soil then i really don't want that i want something that's going to kind of level and balance that out so that is something you need to know i know my soil and my soil needs um, so i added the coffee grounds but i think it's a really good idea just to use this time wisely i know we don't really like being outside when it's cold or at least i don't uh, but it is a good time to kind of run those tests on your soil figure out how you can best overwinter your beds that way you're adding the right nutrients that's going to set you up for complete uh, success in the next season. Now, the whole idea of overwintering a bed is to essentially let your soil work for you instead of against you right so you're used to having all your plants in there uh, in the summertime which is adding nutrients and things like that into your soil same if you were to have a fall garden they're adding nutrients and things into your soil well then when you rip that up and you're not doing anything your soil is just kind of sitting stagnant and you really don't want that you want your soil 
um, to be cozy. You want your soil to still be developing well and having all those good nutrients that it needs. That way you know come the next season it's gonna do well. So that really is why I recommend doing some sort of amendment or overwintering your beds. Um, and you don't want the soil itself. So like this soil right here, I just came out here and grabbed a bunch of it. You don't want that ex exposed really to the harsh elements outside. So by putting that layer of compost, putting that layer of leaves and mulch down, you're really just holding all of that inside. You're creating a warm, cozy environment that's really gonna allow your plants to thrive come the spring. I also think that when people think about overwintering their beds, it seems complicated. This is such a straightforward process. You take all your plants out, you lay a couple inches of compost of, you know, coffee grounds, whatever you want to add to amend it, and then you just lay, you know, mulch or straw or in this case I'm just going to use leaves that I have from from the yard it is seriously I can probably rip up and completely amend this bed in about 20 minutes and have it completely overwintered which is really impressive uh, it doesn't take a lot of time it doesn't take a lot of thought it's really straightforward and the benefits that uh, your soil is gonna reap from it is so worth it now I added my layer of compost underneath here first I put down my coffee grounds my compost now I just have a nice layer of these leaves that I got from the yard. You guys can see now what this is going to do. I still have the rest of the bed to clean out. This was just to show you guys as an example. But now these leaves are just going to decompose. They're going to allow the soil to stay warm and not get really compacted, uh, which is really nice. It's just adding kind of a layer of insulation, if you will, too. Pretty straightforward, though. Another option that you can very easily do is say you don't want to mess with that. Say maybe you don't have access to compost and you, maybe you live in an apartment in downtown but you have a few raised beds. You can just take plastic and drape over your soil and your raised beds and that is absolutely going to help as well. When you think about it, you really are just trying to keep everything cozy throughout the winter. You're trying to keep the rain from beating down and penetrating into your soil you know causing a lot of erosion and clumps and things like that you're really wanting it to stay warm that way when the spring comes around your soil is not hard and compacted and taking a really long time to thaw out before you can plant it and things like that so if you think about it and you have whatever you may amend your beds with say bone meal blood meal something like that you can sprinkle some of that in there lay your plastic over the bed and you can call it good i just want you guys to know there are a lot of different options for this they're all really uh, inexpensive and easy to execute and do if you're just in containers and you're just growing in containers just lay a sheet or something like that that you already have available over it just to kind of keep the soil warm and keep the elements off of it that's really all you're trying to do for me i prefer adding in the coffee grounds, the compost, and the leaves because I know that that is adding all of those extra nutrients and I may not even have to amend my bed or do anything in the spring because I overwintered it properly. Now my other beds over here that I've planted in and I will continue to plant in until you know pretty close to my next planting season, I will have to amend those beds. But the ones that you're just not using, really, really utilize those well in the downtime and just feed all those nutrients into your soil. I promise you your plants in the spring will not regret it now if you do think about this ahead of time uh, where you are able to get your cover crop planted before it's already frosted and it will establish and stuff like that cover crop is a great option and then you can just literally mulch that right back into the soil um, a lot of times and it just really beneficial I really try to think of it as like let your soil work for you um, so I hope that was helpful just showing you guys how straightforward that was how simple it is to overwinter a bed why we overwinter a bed um, I'm gonna get back to work over there and finish doing that bed but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today I'll talk to you soon